Many of my viewers ask me why I focus so much on Antarctica. Well, it's a fascinating place, number one. Number two, if you really think about it logically, it should be number one on the priority list of every major government on the planet. I mean, imagine living in a home where you had seven rooms, yet you could only really go to six of them. And the seventh room, you could make it about two feet inside the front door, and that's it. And that's all you knew. We have an entire continent where the official story, the official story, is that there were no natives. Every single other continent had native inhabitants. They've explored not even a percent of the continent, and they have made all these grandiose statements about what they believe, and we are now attempting to send rovers to Mars and possibly Venus and the moon, all this kind of, when we can't even move about and explore our own oceans and our southern pole at will. It's really putting the cart before the horse. But that's basically the reason why. And there's so much to be covered yet. I've covered a lot, but we've barely scratched the surface. I would like today to show something, though, that I covered yesterday, and I don't think I covered it quite well enough. Now, I know a lot of people laugh about referring to anything from Hollywood, but sometimes there are small levels of, some people refer to it as soft disclosure. I think, honestly, it's sometimes just the consciousness of the planet as a way of moving in and about to things that we wouldn't get revealed otherwise. Now on the left, this is a shot from the series Stargate. And it's kind of muddy, but it shows these creatures. They're called Goa'uld. They're these little serpent things, two to three feet long. And incredibly intelligent, but they need hosts. They need bodies like ours. So they weasel their way in, wrap themselves around the spine, brainstem, and they control the person. Well, they live in this state in liquid, in fluid, in water, some type of medium that way. They die outside of it. I should have used this picture because this is an image of an infant one from the series. They refer to it in the infant stage as a primta. Now, over here on the right is a place in Antarctica, and I'm going to zoom out to show you this. It is in the water. It is off the coast. It's not on land. It would be probably at about the 3 o'clock region. The, uh, of course, Antarctic Peninsula. I have it turned to the right here. Um, this is 12 o'clock, so actually, pardon me, it would be 9 o'clock. My bad, 9 o'clock. So I want to zoom in here and show you this area that's in water. And put these two images side by side and have you look at this closer again. Sorry about that. There we go. Now the image is striking. It's absolutely, the resemblance is beyond coincidence given the amount of other things that we've shown down here. We have the little black eye like we see on this. We have the, the two pincers in the front and this thing has, well, more than two. We have the long neck. And this one appears to be mostly underwater. And only its neck coming out. And an interesting thing that I thought about with this is that many of the people that have described um, Nessie or Champ or Ogopogo or all of these different creatures said that the head of it looked like a horse. It had this long face, this um, horse-like appearance. And, you know, kind of, sort of, here a little bit. 
I'll see if I can zoom the one on the right in a little bit more. I mean, look at the mouth of this. And look at the mouth of this fictional, quote-unquote, creature from the Stargate series. I mean, what are the chances? What are the chances these two things are just looking alike just randomly like this? Given everything else that we found down in Antarctica. You know, the series has one of their Stargates being found in Antarctica. I've shown a Stargate that literally looks exactly like the one in the series in Antarctica. I've shown these places that line up all over the, the planet. And that's basically how the Stargate was used. They just used it to travel from planet to planet. My allegation is that they use it to travel from um, continent to continent. So, I mean, the more you look at stuff like this, it's really, really hard to just dismiss it and say that. Uh, now, I will say this, though. The one on the right, far larger. The one on the right is a uh, hundred feet long. But some of the descriptions of this sea serpent, of this um, mystery, what they call cryptid, have been in that range. So, like I said, who knows? Anyway, let me uh, max this out and show you guys a couple of other things that I kind of missed. Um, yesterday we were talking about this, what I had referred to as some type of serpent structure in the snow, and I had showed that nearby there was these, let's see if I can find it again. These structures, or what looked like the base of buildings, like one here, and there was another one up here. But I did miss this much larger one right here. And this is the result of, of melt. This is something that you wouldn't find in other years. This is 1230. 2012 and here's something I think that it's not that YouTube is not YouTube Google is blocking this they have a lot of different images and sometimes they default to the more benign image the one that doesn't reveal because if you click off historical imagery this is what it shows and you think well wait a minute I mean that's just a giant pile of snow well, this image isn't the most modern image. That image that I just showed you is an image from October 19th, 2009, 2009 pardon me. So they're showing as the default image, an image that's 10 years old. When this image from seven years ago shows something very, very, very different. So don't always think that if you leave off the historical imagery button that you're seeing the most up-to-date image. There's a great deal down here that you can find from years when it was much warmer. There was another thing... Oh. Now, this is something that was discovered by someone else a long time ago. They found this very curious round structure that I've described as a turtle shell type thing. That there may have been some dome that had collapsed, that people were living under. And I've made that allegation from the beginning, that there is a culture down there. They survived the icing event to some extent, beneath the surface, and they've been able to move forward. And the caverns down there, under the ice, I don't think modern humans can really wrap their mind around what it would be like 
to live in an area that's 100 miles wide, 100 miles long, and two miles high, but yet still under a mile of ice. That there would be this ceiling up there 10,000 feet. And that it would be stable enough that you could, you know, bore through it and that you could create tunnels through it is just something beyond our comprehension. Now, the reason I brought this up is there's a second one I found. And it's right here. This is in the region where the uh, we found that fleet of ships. Those, uh, well, I shouldn't say fleet, but, it, you know, group of ships, two or three ships. And we have the exact same thing going on here. We have this round structure where it looks like a dome has collapsed. And all these features you can find for yourself in Google Earth Pro. I will put all of the coordinates down in the description. You can go there for yourself and make your own decision. A couple other things. If we're going to, I know that a lot of the things that I talk about are somewhat fantastical serpents and dragons and that type of thing honestly the greatest evidence the greatest evidence for civilization down here isn't that for me it's stuff like this some people want to tell you that this is just volcanic rock this is the layout of a town of what used to be a town. These are streets and roads and pathways. Because right here, you can see where there was some type of a park, where they made some kind of a roundabout. This looks like any city America when you look at this. I've referred to it for as uh, cobbling or pathways. I refer to it a lot of different ways, but when you look at stuff like this, I don't know how anyone can imagine that this was just all created by a volcano. I mean, look at this. There's another area that I've found that I refer to as ancient Manhattan. And maybe I'll do that in the next video, go back to ancient Manhattan and show this island where you can see the footprints of the buildings and the streets. And they're long gone. But that will be the evidence we leave behind. After we're long gone, the giant footprints of the highways that we've created and these enormous buildings will be left. And you'll be able to see them from orbit. The last one I'll leave with is this one. Now, even the most skeptical person would have to look at this particular perfect path. And these two paths that diverge off of it. It looks like here they might have uh, had some type of a collapse. And I don't know how anyone can look at this and say, well, yep, yeah, that's just wind, ice, rock, and snow. It just makes these perfect, beautiful, long, sloping pathways. And up here, there is something that looks like, remember we were talking about these um, Eurypterids yesterday? Okay, look at this thing. It's got these two little weird tails off the bottom of it. Two giant pincers in front. There's an eye just laying here. You're not going to tell me this is ice, rock, or snow that makes shapes like this. Something much larger here. And these pathways go to things that definitely look like some type of 
tunnel or structure or home or cave in the ice. There's a secondary path below it here. A little bit harder to make out. And you can see where these go. This is the kind of evidence that I don't know how anybody debunks. So, anyway. Now, short of there being some type of Morgan Freeman deep impact style press conference announcing, you know, that we have made contact with whatever, whatever. I think this is something that's just going to probably have to work its way into our consciousness over time to understand it. Anyway, I'm just glad we're not talking about politics anymore. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.